The Stream Deck Plus is game changing. Let me tell you why. Elgato went and added knobs to the Stream Deck and even though it came at the cost of seven keys, the functionality you gain is insane. You have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. So the Stream Deck cuts down the number of keys to eight, adding four knobs and a touchscreen in the process. A cool feature of the touchscreen is that any function you assign to the knobs is displayed above that knob on the touchscreen. Even better, to change pages, you no longer need to waste a key to do that, and instead you can just swipe on the touchscreen. Great quality of life feature. While the buttons look and feel much the same as previous Stream Decks, the overall build quality of the device is solid, and the knobs have a good satisfying click as you turn them. One downside though is the stand is non-adjustable and non-removable, so maybe we'll see those features added in the future, as well as possibly making the device a little taller to add another row of buttons to the top. I like buttons, I want more buttons, but I don't want to sacrifice the knobs. If you wanted to personalize this though, Elgato does sell different colored knobs, so there's always that. Now why is this game changing? Let me show you why. Welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and I like to teach you guys about repairing, setting up, and streaming from your PC. If you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. One thing I do want to point out about the knobs or the dials is that you can't assign just anything to them. There are uh, functions that assign to just the keys and functions that assign to just the dials. You can't assign anything that's made for a key to go on a dial. So I hope that this is something that Elgato works on possibly updating in the future because the dials are buttons themselves. So I would like the idea of being able to use the dial as a button just to make up for the, I guess, lack of buttons overall on this device instead of being relegated to using only dial compatible functions on the dials. Let me show you what I mean here. As you can see here in the software, you have keys and you have dials. Now, if I try to take a key, something like play audio through a soundboard, which you should be able to do with just any kind of button press, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be an LCD key. It could just be one of the dial buttons. And I try to drag it over to the dial, nothing. Can't put it there. But then if you see, I can, I can put that on the key. That's what it's made for, but I can't put it on the dial. Now, if I go to the dial section, then I can go ahead and put whatever I want there. You see, it lights up now. It lets me. It's uh, not exactly free to do anything from this side on the dial, only from this side. Now, the volume controller plugin is almost the star of the show for me because it can do so much in terms of fine tuning and controlling all sorts of different volume levels throughout your computer. What I mean by that is anything that's making noise will pop up as long as you have, let's say, the auto detection volume controller button assigned to a key, and then you press it on the key, then you can adjust things with the dial. Okay, so right now I've unmuted a bunch of stuff, so I have all sorts of stuff playing in my headset. You can probably hear it in the background a little bit. I have stuff in Firefox, stuff in Google Chrome. I have Media Player running. If there was a game, you'd also see that. So I'll show you. I'm gonna press the volume controller button right here. And I push the button and I get a little list and little things on the dials of everything that happens to be making noise right now. So if I wanted to mute Firefox or just adjust the volume of Firefox, I can turn it down just like that. Tap it to mute it. Discord being noisy, I can mute it there too or control its volume as well. And you can either push this button here and it will change what's on there. Or you can just, uh, actually don't swipe, just push the button there and then you see more things. Now I have Google Chrome, that's where Crab Rave is playing, mute that. Um, and then OBS as well, if you have like alerts making noise, you can jump over to that and press that. What do I have playing still? I have, uh, I have my media player, so let's see what else is there. There's media player, let's mute that. Or let's turn that up, yeah. Having that kind of volume control access without having to look to other windows, alt tab, mute, or just just pushing a button, scrolling around a little bit, moving the dials is awesome. Now, something else that's really awesome is you can adjust the volume levels of what's inside OBS independent of what you're hearing in your headphones. So I've assigned a button to the knob here. And uh, if I just turn it down here, you can see that my mic aux 2 level is moving up and down. That's my OBS volume mixer that I dragged out onto the desktop. I'm pointing, you can, you can see it moving right there. I'm just moving that knob. You can see what level it's at. It tells you what number right on the touch screen. It's pretty useful. <laughs>
Recently, Elgato updated their Discord plugin for all the Stream Decks, but with the Stream Deck Plus, you get some additional functionality that I think is awesome. Let me show you. I'm in a Discord server right now and I'm muted. I can just go into my little Discord folder that I made here and I can unmute Discord with the button. What? what? See? And then <laughs> a couple of what's over there. And uh, But you can see here dynamically also showing on the button, or rather on the touch screen, Discord volume, Discord. It shows you that you know your current status muted or i can out. or i can turn them down like that mute it back up but I, while it's muted i can turn them back up but what's also cool is you can adjust individual volume level here now this one will show the active user that's speaking but the one and it's it's actually really nice in that it updates in real time so whenever somebody's talking that one will light up but here's the problem that i've encountered with it is that it doesn't dynamically update who is talking. It will change depending on like if I swipe and swipe away. If I go right, here, I right here, I somebody else is talking. Uh, nope, still on that person. And uh, let me see real quick. We're doing good. Oh, okay. It, it's letting me back us out. There it goes. It's only on one user, so that one can use a little work. And actually just spending another couple of seconds with it, I figured out how to cycle it between users. Instead of relying on an automatic method for it to detect who's talking and show it on the screen, you can just press the knob down and it will change between who is speaking or rather who's in that channel with you. So if you know that somebody's talking and they're being loud, you can just go into them and turn them down right there. Switch users by pushing the button. I could probably turn him up a little bit, push the button and probably bring down, bring him down a little bit. That is super neat. Now, furthermore, on the Discord integration is the ability to push buttons in the Discord's built-in soundboard, which is a relatively new thing that they added, on the Stream Deck. Now, this isn't specific to the Stream Deck Plus, but it's nice that if you wanted to push a button to make a sound effect in Discord for your friends to hear, and you don't want to use SoundPad, which is like five bucks to route it through your mic line so that anything anybody can hear, most of the time people are just trolling around in Discord with it. Discord has solved that and you could just do this stuff with it by pushing the buttons there. That's uh, another useful feature of just, and a good example of like the power of the plugins you get from the Elgato Marketplace. Now, another really good quality of life feature on the Stream Deck Plus is using the touchscreen to switch pages. No longer do you have to make a button to change pages, which would essentially waste a button. And considering that you have less buttons on this device, that's actually a really smart thing to do. So if you just want to change pages, again, you just swipe in there. Uh, page one there, there's page two. And the page two has all my OBS scenes on it. So if I wanted to just use that, have a page dedicated to that, I can swipe over to it, no problem. And I can go to this scene. Um, I can go to this scene. Um, and, you know, really useful, of course. I keep saying that, but that's all this device is. It just makes everything so useful. One complaint people have had about Elgato Stream Decks has been that they're kind of expensive and cheaper free options that do much of the same functionality do exist. However, there's nothing out there like the Stream Deck Plus. The fact this enables access to use Elgato's top-notch Wavelink software is the value add that puts this over the top. This thing is just buttons and knobs, but it gives you the ability to EQ your mic, separate your audio between what you want your audience to hear and what you, what you hear, dynamically control volumes of literally anything on your computer for you or your stream, and control scenes, sources, filters, and everything stream related. It's just awesome. And I'm still only scratching the surface of what it can do. For example, control all the lighting in your room. One button turns everything off. Bam. The Stream Deck Plus basically becomes your command center for anything you want to do on your PC and then companies like Sideshow FX exist out there that sell icon and profile packs to make this even more useful for people like photo and video editors. In my opinion, this is the best Stream Deck that Elgato has ever made. What do you think? Drop a comment down below and let's talk about it. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss any uploads. Also, I stream on Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific, so swing by, drop a follow, and let's talk more stream tech. My name is Chris, and I've been your stream technician. Catch you guys in the next one.